1978 marked a milestone in independent Kenya's history. It was the year the country's founding president, Jomo Kenyatta, died, and his vice president, Daniel Arap Moy, succeeded him. Kenyatta died in his sleep on Tuesday, August 22nd, at State House Mombasa. He had been in a cheerful mood the previous week when he posed for a family photograph at that year's traditional family reunion set to mark the day he had been released from detention by the British colonial authorities back in 1960. Everyone had looked jovial and happy. Though he had been ill for some time, no one suspected Kenyatta would die so soon. Moy was sworn in the same day at State House Nairobi as interim president, in accordance with the Constitution's provisions for presidential succession. In his first pronouncement as acting president, Moy vowed to follow in the Nyayo, or footsteps, of his predecessor. His first task as president would be to preside over the funeral arrangements for the late president. There were ten days of mourning during which Kenyatta lay in state at State House Nairobi. On 31st August, Kenyatta was laid to rest on the grounds of Parliament in a funeral ceremony that was attended by his family, Kenyan leaders and dozens of dignitaries from foreign countries. On September 23rd, Moy was unanimously nominated for the post of president of the ruling party Kano. In a one-party state, it meant that he would be the only person eligible to vie for the post of president in the presidential election that was called for on October 6th. Moy chose Moy Kibaki, Minister for Finance, as his vice president. The two were sworn in at Uhuru Park on October 14th. And in the cabinet that he formed after his being sworn in, he retained everyone who had been in the cabinet that Kenyatta had left. Kibaki went on to be elected Kanu vice president in the national elections that the ruling party held on October 28th, the first national elections the party had held since 1966 when the party's vice president, Oginga Odinga, quit to take up the leadership of an opposition party, the Kenya People's Union. Kibaki beat his only rival for the seat, veteran Embu leader Jeremiah Nyaga, by 1,191 to 390 votes. The Kanu elections were the final ritual in Moy's accession to power. Delegation after delegation of leaders, including those who had opposed his ascendancy to the presidency, now trooped to Kabarak, the equivalent of Kenyatta's Gatundu home, to declare their allegiance. On Jamhuri Day that year, Moy released from detention all who had been detained by Kenyatta. They included former Deputy Speaker of Parliament, Jean-Marie Serene, former MPs, Martin Shikuku, George Anyona and Koigi Wawamwere, as well as the novelist and Nairobi University lecturer Ngugi Wadiongo. But 1978 was also the year a team of Nairobi University doctors, led by Professor Nelson Awori, performed Black Africa's first kidney transplant at Kenyatta National Hospital. It was the year the Tana River Development Authority, TARDA, came into being. The year also saw the establishment of Kenya Post and Telecommunications Corporation, following the collapse of the East African community under which the former East African Post and Telecommunications had operated. And it was the year Kenya finally overtook India as the largest exporter of tea to Britain, then the largest tea market in the world. In sports, it was the year the indefatigable long-distance runner, Henry Rono, broke four world records in a spell of three months. 3,000 meters in Oslo, Norway, 5,000 meters in Berkeley, California, 10,000 meters in Vine, Austria, and the 3,000 meters steeplechase in Seattle, USA.
In 1978, in addition to their first president, Kenyans said goodbye in May that year to Kenyatta's former Minister for Agriculture, Bruce McKenzie, who died in a plane crash at Wilson Airport, Nairobi, and to former freedom fighter, W.W.W. Awari. <laughs>